Hello, his nibs here, and in this latest video, we're going on a little field trip first into the kitchen as I introduce the new Asfine V126. V standing for a vac filler, vacuum filler, and this is the second one from Asfine. The uh, Teardrop Overlay, which was the first pen they produced, was also a vac filler. Now, why am, in, why am I in the kitchen, you ask? Well, first, because I'm about to have my first coffee of the day, and my voice won't be quite as deep and sleep-filled as it is at the moment. But the second reason is that the version of the V126 that I'll showing you and testing, I've been writing with it actually for about a week, is uh, a, they call it a transparent uh, or demo version of the pen. There are several other colors as well, which are translucent, like a blue, for instance. But this one is a, uh, called a frosted white or frosted transparent. And apparently it's because you have to keep it in the freezer to use. So that's what I've been doing. And let me switch uh, off of my sleep. Sleep-induced visage of sleepiness. Those are all technical terms. And go to uh, the pen itself. And, okay, well, that didn't switch over, so, <laughs> fooled me. So, I'm just going to open the, the freezer here. And, let's take a look at this frosted pen. As you can see, beautiful appearance. I don't really know why you have to keep it in the freezer to be frosted, but... And the ink always freezes, so that, that's not a, a good sign. But we'll get to more details um, in uh, the filling and writing portion of this video. And maybe I'll have an explanation for the frosted version. Uh, let me find the stop button now. So let's take a quick look at the... Uh... Asfine V126. Uh, you can see the overall design similarity to the Pilot Custom 123, uh, Wingsung 699, but this has some unique features of its own. One is the really nice frosted acrylic in this uh, translucent but almost transparent pen. The only thing that prevents it from being transparent is that it's a uh, frosted finish. Kind of a classic torpedo shape. Um, variation, of course. Uh, I often have on my desk here the Schaefer Balance 2, which is also a, a decent sized pen, and the Balance was really the first pen model that uh, brought the torpedo shape to Pendum. And to see the kind of size that we have grown to, although this one is probably 20 years old, here's one of the original Schaefer balances. Quite a bit uh, more diminutive than the later balance two. Iteration. 
This is the size pen that uh, people wrote with in the Golden Age. And with it posted, it's actually very, very comfortable. Even unposted, it can be, it can be used for shorter writing sessions. Anyway, let's go back to the Asfine V126. And for those of you who are not that familiar with uh, vac fillers, let me show you the, the principle before we actually dip this in some ink and fill that way. So you unscrew the black, the blind cap in the back, pull back on the plunger, and unlike a piston fill, which fills if this was in the, the bottle of ink, it would be filling as you pull back the plunger. That's not the case with a vac filler. Here you pull back on the plunger, dip the section into the bottle of ink, and then push down on the plunger. And when it reaches this point, it's a little bit wider here. And that, uh, that releases the vacuum and boom. Now the ink will start to fill the barrel. So that was a highly technical explanation of uh, how a vac filler works. All right, wasn't that technical? In fact, it was kind of meaningless. Howsomever, most of my videos are somewhat meaningless, so let me get out some paper towel for this operation and we'll... Okay, let's use some Pelican turquoise ink for this operation. Okay. I don't know why I had to breathe hard while I opened the cap, but it's early in the morning. I'm older than I used to be. And pull back the plunger. Hopefully I can capture this all on film. That actually isn't film anymore. So, what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to pay more attention to this side. You'll just have to realize that I have my finger on the end of the vacuum fill rod and watch the translucent barrel as I Slowly, slowly to press the rod until this point. Boom! Wow, look at that. Gorgeous experience. And this is this is typical with a first motion of a vac fill. It usually fills about half of the barrel or so. So the technique to get a fuller fill is to pull back on the rod and then press forward so you get rid of a lot of that air put it back in the ink Press again, and you get more of a fill. And I see that we're not getting a lot of that on camera. Let me do that one more time. So I'm going to pull back. I'm going to. Push on the rod again. 
just short of, I hope, where the barrel expands. Put it back in the ink. And press down again. Okay, and we got a much fuller fill that time. Alrighty. Sorry for this, uh, not really being centered with the camera the whole time. And I'm going to turn back the knob for security's sake. And we've just got about the entire barrel filled now with ink, but you can still see enough of the sloshing to make it interesting. Recap this. And a very, very attractive pen from Asvine. And let me see. Close up, where is my loop? I can't find my loop. Where is the damn? There's the damn loop. Okay. And I still can't see through the camera. Okay, this is a fine. Fine nib. You can probably see it better than I can because I'm not really seeing what I'm doing through the camera. And like every Asfine pen, I've used very, very smooth, adjusted very well, unlike your narrator. Now, I don't have the uh, a Pilot Custom 823 to directly compare with this Asfine. But the Custom 823 is a very, very similar pen and design, also a vac fill. And is about 10 times more expensive than this pen. Part of that is the gold nib. This is a gold-colored steel nib. But having this pen in hand, I really don't need to go purchase a Pilot Custom 823. Um, I'm less and less willing as time goes by and as these, the quality of these Chinese pens are, have become so terrific in the last year or two. Um, I'm not really want wanting to go and spend multiple hundreds of dollars for a new pen model. As much as I love Pilot and uh, the great pens that they produce, the great nibs that they produce, I have to say these Chinese manufacturers, uh, Asfine, Hongdian uh, in particular recently, have really upped the game of Chinese pens. And um, I'm willing to forgo a lot of pens that I might have considered in the past that cost 10 times as much. This Asfine uh, V126 is somewhere in the 30 to $35 range as I recall. Uh, this was sent to me by Asfine, so I didn't actually purchase this. So I'm not 100% of the price, 100% sure of the price, but the, um, 
the Pilot Custom A23 is in the closer to the $300 range. So we'll discuss this pen a little bit more, but I wanted to show the the filling and the very first writing with it in this scene. Okay, a quick addendum to this uh, video. Here are the first four Asfine fountain pens produced. The V169 vac filler with the raindrop overlay pattern. And like the first three pens I've gotten from Asfine, uh, this has a medium nib, and there's a little ink left in there. The second was their first piston filler, the P20, which came in four colors. This is the ocean blue. Very, very, another very lovely pen. As these all have some ink in them, I'm not going to demonstrate, again, their filling mechanisms, but I've done videos about them before. And the second Asfine piston filler, and this was the P30. And finally, the one I've been using for a bit now, their second vac filler and this is the v126 in clear frosted or white frosted the name changes from time to time so there, those are the four and let's see this is not going to be exact because uh, these pens have various amounts of ink in them, but just to give a general overview of weight, the V169 is uh, 53.4, and that's almost empty of ink. The P20 is 28, well, 29 exactly. The P30 is a bit of a heavier pen, I would say, 47.8, and that's still has a lot of ink in that, so bear that in mind, and a large capacity. And the V126 at 29.1. Now let's see this little elephant. 27.9, so that's quite similar to the last pen we looked at. This little bunny rabbit. 10.8. And what else can we plop on here while I have the scale available? How about this bluebird that my wife made at some point? 2.9 ounces, I mean uh, grams, or whatever we're measuring. <laughs> and here, here's that bird with two eggs and a nest, and that's a whopping 27.8. So I hope you will record all of these weights and measures for your journal. All right, put that aside. And okay, a couple things I've noticed, which let me see if I can get a little closer. This pen, and it's more obvious because of its translucent nature, tends to, as you can see, collect a fair amount of moisture. This hasn't even been in my pocket. And another thing I've noticed is that 
Uh, well, the, the, the nib is ink free, so that's good. Uh, another thing I've noticed is the threads on this. You have to be at least this particular pen. This may not be the case in all of the uh, V126s. Might just be my individual pen. It cross threads a little bit if I'm not very gentle. Okay, it's cross starting now. I have to be a little bit gentle in bringing the threads together and then it's fine. So just something I noticed. Um, again, I'm not really going to demonstrate this since the pen is full of ink, but for those of you who are not that familiar with uh, vacuum fillers, when you turn down the knob fully, it actually uh, has a shutoff valve. It seals the reservoir of ink and seals it separate from the feed and section, which is great for air travel, for instance. You're not going to get all of this ink gushing out as the plane ascends and descends. However, sometimes when you're writing, you'll notice that the ink is getting, I mean, the nib is getting ink starved. And that's because there's no more or very little appreciable ink left in the section and feed. So there are two things you can do. Some people with vacuum fillers just break that seal. Boom, you can feel it. So it's no longer sealed and the ink can replenish the section, feed, and nib. So they'll just, if they're, especially if they're doing a, a long writing session, they'll just leave this, in effect, cracked open. But if you're not going to be writing a, a tremendous amount or spending a lot of time writing, then just cracking this, letting it replenish the section, feed, and nib is all you need. And then for security, you can, again, tighten the knob. So I've really, as with all ass finds, I've used, uh, whoops, and I didn't get any, there we go. Uh, I've really enjoyed both pen and nibs. The nibs have been flawlessly smooth in every one that I've gotten without any uh, necessity of adjust, adjustment on my part. And no different with this one. Again, these are not flex nibs. You can get a little variation by pressing down, but it's, uh, I'd stick with a stub or a architect nib if you really want uh, shading to your writing or a, a real flex nib for flex. So this is my first Asvine fine. Now I haven't used these pens in a bit, so I'm probably going to have to get some ink down into the feed and nib with gravity assist. Oh, it writes right away. Great. And this is a, a medium. So there, there is a slight difference, but not as great a difference as with many pen makers between an F and an M nib. Uh, and again, when you use different inks, you're going to get uh, different amounts of ink put down as well. But these are, are really close. And I would be pretty hard put to just examining writing determine the difference between them. But then my eyes are not what they used to be. Much of me is not as it used to be. There have been some improvements, but whoops. That was me bringing my coffee cup full of coffee. Anyway, uh, 
This is the point of the video, if I haven't already done so earlier, which I think I did. This, uh, this is the point where I start to babble, which, if I catch it in time, alerts me to the fact that I should bring a video to a close. So, as fine, wonderful, wonderful pen models, and uh, very encouraged by everything that they have done since their launching last year. And uh, as I probably have mentioned, uh, Brittenham Lee, who is the principal behind the company I've dealt with for, wow, uh, well over 20 years uh, importing Chinese pens from him. And I'm really glad that he's, he's branched out into his own line. And uh, you can't go wrong with an asphine fountain pen. Talk with you soon, I hope. Take care. Bye-bye.